move on a bit. And, yep. <laughs> and luckily, um, our mysterious stranger here has the ability to use curing magic, which is, uh, pretty beneficial. Especially right now, since we got pretty beat up during that boss battle. And now we have a nice little random battle before we actually get to the whole reason we, we came to this uh, cave. So I'm sure everybody's like wondering why we're here, what's this mission all about? Why do we have such a powerful, mindless creature, or I mean, this uh, powerful, mind-controlled girl tagging along with us? So, you know, we have this frozen Esper, and his name is Tritok, even though I remember I went through so many pronunciations as uh, as a kid as to, like, how you would pronounce his name. You got Tritok, Tree Touch, I mean, I went through so many different pronunciations for it, but I settled upon, uh, settled upon Tritok. Sounds reasonable, because... This Esper pretty much represents water, no, um, what was it, ice, lightning, and fire all combined into one, since that's pretty much what his magic ability is, but, yeah, I'm kind of ruining it already, but, you know, we're going to find that out anyways in the future, so, I guess that's one spoiler that we can, you know, forgive. And now he's showing off some of his powers by, you know, not so ex unexpectedly killing off Fix and Reg. I mean, what a shocker. But you gotta feel sorry for those guys, though. Always getting the crap deal out of these uh, Final Fantasy series. Although, I'm not, I don't think they were in, like, Final Fantasy 1. I, I believe they were in Final Fantasy 2. Or I mean Final Fantasy IV, I should say. Definitely we're in the after years, that's for sure. Oh, and now we wind up in this, uh, uh, stranger's house somehow. I mean, who really knows how we got there? Um, what was this guy doing in the cave to begin with? Or maybe uh, Tritok teleported her somewhere where this guy found her. Just some mystery, really. Just like uh, the mystery of her not being able to remember anything. Hmm. And now we have like we have this little intro to her, telling her, giving you like some backstory to, about this character, just letting you know what they're all about, essentially. And yes, her name is Tara. And I think I might have said that before, because, you know, I can't help it. I played this game so much that I really can't call her, like, a serious lady without having to put some effort into it. It's always going to be like, Tara, Tara, Tara. And now we got the police on us. But... I don't know. I always see a, I see a mummy every time I look at them. I can't help it. I mean, I don't know. Do you guys see a zom um, a zombie, a mummy when you look at them? I mean, I can't help but see it. Maybe it's just me, but whatever. I always found it so strange, like as a kid playing this game, and I see those guys, and it's like, okay, so there's mummies in this place. Now we're just trying to make our escape and run from them. Of course, there's like so many of them here, and they're pretty hot on our trails. Man, I, I still can't believe that that audio sync just didn't work out. I mean, I spent... I must have spent like a half hour trying to you know, make it all sync up, and at times it seemed like it was working, but then I will go to another point in the video where it's just completely messed up. And it's like nearly impossible to get spot on for this game because you have like so many, 
so many like sounds that have to be perfect, like selecting from the screen. You know, they make that little noise every time you move from like fight to item to uh, magic. And then you have the enemy sound effects that go off also like, hitting and everything. <laughs> it just never worked out when I was uh, editing this. So, I mean, rather than going mad and staying up all night trying to fix that problem, I just decided, okay, maybe, like, post-commentary will be the ideal solution for now until, like, some better arrangement comes along. I just, I just don't really like the whole recording from this and doing audio from, uh, you know, Audacity, for, for example. It's always trying to sync up the game. That's the biggest problem. But I guess it depends on the game also. Nah, even then it's like... I don't know, it's just a pain in the ass really. So, you know, I'm interested to know like how other people do it, because I know they use like... They do the same thing also, like, a, a lot of people, um, they use, like, Audacity for, like, the audio portion, and then they, you know, use, like, a different thing for recording, and they have to sync up everything, but I wonder, like, what's their hints for making everything sync up as it should. Now we're just pretty much, like, going through this cave here. Trying to make our grand escape, and you know, not gonna work out so well because we got we're pretty much cornered. What are we gonna do except just fall through a hole? And yeah, it's gotta hurt, it has to hurt pretty much. Making one step, and she's dead. Yeah, game over, folks. Game over. Now we have a cutscene to one point in our uh, memory. Not sure, like, not sure how long long ago this was. Perhaps like a couple days ago or something. Right before the mission started. Makes you wonder what the uh, Empire is planning on doing. I mean, they send Vixen Reg and this girl. Uh, Terra. Jeez, now I'm in the habit of calling a girl, but yeah, so they sent Vixen Wedge and Terra over to Narsh to take uh, the Esper. But really, I would have sent a more specialized team and Terra to go after this Esper since, yeah, they made short work of the two soldiers, that's for sure. They had, like, no usefulness on, like, one of my favorite characters are like showing up right now. It's really cool. Of course, that just sounds stupid, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you have like Kafka, General Leo, Gestal, the Emperor, and Celis, or Celis. That's another name, but we'll get to it later on when we actually encar uh, encounter these uh, characters. So what's going to become of uh, Terra now that pretty much she's unconscious there, completely defenseless while the enemy troops draw closer. Now we have a new character here, uh, that took you long enough. And so now we have another character, um, you would call him a thief, but he would uh, prefer the term treasure hunter. His name is, uh, it's Locke. Not too bad, I like that name, it's a pretty cool name. Simple, but... I don't know, I guess it's one of those names that's cool, but... Could be a little strange also, because... It is Locke. Name of a, you know, door lock or something like that. 
Except they add the E at the end to uh, differentiate it. Not too much though. And you're not fooling anybody. And so now, pretty much, Locke has been given the duty to try and rescue Terra. But, you know, would he be able to reach her before the soldiers did? I mean, he. I don't know, the soldiers seemed a lot quicker. And closer also, so. Very sus. It's very, very. Um, I don't know, it'd be a close one. And sure enough. Uh, Block used the same method and dropped through the hole also. Huh. Just doesn't mess around. But he got there just in time since, you know, only one guy came along. Huh. He just didn't send enough people. Oh, well, nope, they got the wolfmen or mammoth people, whatever you're gonna call them, since they come out as mammoths under uh, sprites. Cupa. Well, look what we have here. Got some Moogles. Here to save the day. I thought these were like the coolest characters in the whole game, and, you know, I was so like surprised when they first introduced them when uh, Final Fantasy 3 came out. It's like, who the hell are these people? It's like they're little teddy bears, pretty much. Little teddy bears. And so now, this is like, um, it's a pretty unique feature that they did. That they never did in like any Final Fantasies prior. And I don't even think they did it very often in future ones also since, you know, Final Fantasy 6, Final Fantasy 7 came out. That was just like entirely 3D. And, um, hmm. Yeah, I think the only thing we had that's close to this is uh, a little minigame in Final Fantasy VII, that hill defense. The tower defense, pretty much. I think that's like the first one I can think of in terms of tower defense that came out. But that was such a, an addicting minigame, I would say. Oh yeah, pretty much for this. Yeah, it's exactly what it seems. You have three teams to work with, and you're trying to get to the other end of uh, the cave to fight the general. You don't even have to defeat all the soldiers that come your way. But you just have to make sure that they don't reach Terra, otherwise it's game over. But if you defeat the general before all the soldiers even get there, then it's all over. They just disappear, but it makes good uh, experience for Locke. But definitely Mog, who's the main Moogle in this game, he has far more HP than Locke does. It's kind of a shame, because it makes Locke rather useless in this whole fight. They can take care of um, they can take care of the soldiers easy enough, but the general at the end, he packs quite a punch, that's for sure. He has like some attacks that can take care of these guys in one shot, so things do get pretty suspenseful. More intense, I should say. It's strange, I'm used to uh, doing commentary while playing the game. Because I think it makes a difference. Quite a difference. Kuden, Kuru. Yeah, I remember I remarked in, uh, the other audio, like kuru, means like to come in Japanese. Kuru kimas. Ugh, I'm just, I'm just like blabbing, you know, rambling. That's what I'm looking for. Just rambling at the moment.